Chapter 2 Transplantations and Borderlands. Here we start where in the English are colonizing and making a whole bunch of settlements in the New World. First of all, the London Company set, settles in Virginia, a town called Jamestown. And the area they settled in was called, is the, like the Chesapeake region. When they settled Jamestown, it was like mostly men who didn't want to work. They just were looking for gold. So therefore, there was, they didn't want to grow food, so a lot of people died during the starving time, which was the winter of 1609 to 1610. They chose a poor location, and a lot of people died from disease. And because it was just men, there was a lack of permanence to the settlement because permanence would be like families and natural reproduction to grow a settlement. Under the leadership of John Smith, he helps by um, making people work and then they therefore they, they have food and, and such as that and then and then the first governor is Lord de la War. He imposed it poses discipline and helps grow the colony. They, they not only survive, but they also expand. The main, the main crop in Jamestown is tobacco, and jo a man named John Rolfe makes the crop prosper, you know, because it, England wants all the tobacco, so he helps with that. And so, because they were growing a lot of tobacco, they needed more land, so they expanded the colony. And there was a headright system which gave land to current and new settlers. It encouraged more settlements, more colonists. Then there was the House of Burgesses, which, is the, which was the first meeting of elect elected legislature in what would become America, the United Colonies of America. They had to, in the Jamestown area, there were Indians called the Powhatan, and they had to keep them under control as well. So then the Virginia Company is no longer functioning anymore. They went, they went broke making the colony, so now Jamestown is a royal colony. Also, the English learned a lot from the Indians about how to do agriculture and such as that. Okay, so now we move on. Well, we talk about Maryland and then go back a little bit to Vir Virginia. But about Maryland, Maryland is a proprietary colony founded by the Calverts as a haven for Catholics. It didn't really end up that way, but that's what they proposed to do. So the Protestants also came, so there was a kind of policy of religious toleration there. Okay, back to Virginia, a man named William Berkeley was the governor. He attempted and failed to protect the Indian land. He also ruled autocratically and controlled everything. So then, you know, the people on the outskirts of the settlement, they were clashing with the Indians, and the government went and provide help for them. So a man named Nathaniel Bacon rose up, and with his army against both the Indians and the government. It was like one of the first major um, rebellions against authority in, the re in America. Then there was Plymouth. Plymouth was settled by separatists, or which are called pil pilgrims, on the Mayflower. They sought to provide a Christian community in the New World. And what was the point about them was that they made a Mayflower, something called a Mayflower Compact, which established a civil government for the area. They also formed friendships with the Indians, and there William Bradford was the governor. Now we move on to Massachusetts. Massachusetts started as a business venture, but the Puritans took it all over. They wanted to make a haven for them to worship as they wanted to. A man named John Winthrop organized the migration to the New World. 
And he also, I believe he also became governor there. And there they ha had congregational churches rather than strict allegiance to the Church of England. And in Ma Massachusetts Bay Colony, that's what it's called, they had a theo theocratic society where religion and government intertwine. Then, for Connecticut, they talk briefly about Connecticut. A man named Ta Thomas Hooker led people to Hartford in Connecticut. Then there, there was a Fundamental Orders of Connecticut, which was the constitution of the colony. And then there was also another settlement called New Haven. Connecticut was formed from like people who came from Massachusetts to other areas. That was the main idea about Connecticut. Rhode Island was formed about the same way, too. A man named Robert, Roger Williams in Rhode Island, well, Roger Williams called for a separation of church and state. So the, but the government didn't like that, so they banished, banished him from Massachusetts, and he settled Rhode Island. It's the only colony in which Christians as well as non-Christians could worship freely. The other religious toleration was only for Christians. Which is not really toleration at all. <laughs> no, is it? Go back to Massachusetts a little bit. A woman named Anne Hutchinson challenged a lot of the theology of the Puritans. They, she pr promoted the idea of antinomian heresy, which was that anyone out of the, the elect shouldn't hold a spiritual office. And because because of what she did, the clergy limited women's activities even more. Then, New Hampshire and Maine were formed, but not many settlers went there. A man named John Wilwright, though, does lead some religious dissenters to New Hampshire. And then, talk a little bit about the Indians. To start with, the English had peaceful relations with the Indians, but as with almost every natives versus Europeans, tensions start to form. And so conflicts arise from that. So in the Pequot War, the English, allied with other Indian tribes, wipe out the Pequot tribe. And then in King Philip's War, the Wampanoag tribe rises up to resist the in English under the leadership of Metacomet, which is, King Philip is his English name, but he's an Indian. And the English won that war. <coughs> in the little wars, there was like different technology and stuff. They had the flintlock rifle, both the English and the Indians had it. Because as you know, English and natives trade. And they get the new guns and weapons and stuff. So, then we go back to England a little bit. And I got the English Civil War. The English Civil War is the conflict between the Cavaliers, supporters of the king, and the Roundheads, which were the forces of par Parliament, mostly Puritans. And they were like going head to head and like stuff. So, the Roundheads behead King Charles I, and our Oliver Cromwell takes it over. But then, King Charles II regains the throne, which is, and that's called the Stuart Re Reformation. Then he issues charters for four new colonies, Carolina, New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. And then we talk about those new colonies. So, in the Carolinas, the incentives to settle in the co in get the Carolinas were the head right system, religious freedom, and for Christians, of course. Yeah. A man named John Locke writes the constitution for the colony, and the Carolinas, though they were considered one, just one colony, the north and the south were actually quite different and distinctly separate. So, of course, there's instability in the colonies. 
instability in the colonies. So, colonists take over the government, but then it, Carolina becomes a royal colony. So now we get to talk about the Dutch. The Dutch settle the New Netherland. But, since, since that, their colony was located between some of the English colonies north and south, the English wanted the Dutch colony. So, they took it, and the Duke of New York renamed the colony New York. Of course, you gotta always make it English. You can't just leave something Dutch now, can you? The power in the colony was widely and unequally dispersed in the colony. Yes. So then, New Jersey. So the Duke of York, he had like a lot, a lot of land from like his father or something or something. Somebody owed him a debt. I don't remember. I'm sorry. So the Duke gives the land to George Carteret and New Jersey later becomes a royal colony. Pennsylvania! More religious dissenters called the Quakers. They originally the Society of Friends in England, and then they began to call themselves Quakers because they would tremble in the face of God. They were seeking a haven in the New World, just like all the other religious dissenters. They were both anarchistic and democratic. They had no church government or clergy. They felt like if you felt the need to talk in church, anybody could. You could just talk, and they would allow it. So, because they wanted a colony in the New World, a man named William Penn found Pennsylvania. He forms the city of Philadelphia, which is the city of brotherly love. Under William Penn, Pennsylvania is friendly with the Indians, but after that, not so much. They also formed the, what's called the Charter of Liberties, which is a representative assembly which limits the power of the proprietor, which William Penn was the proprietor. So, in a way, Pennsylvania and Maryland are similar in that they were both pro proprietary colonies. So then we talk about the Caribbean a little bit. And the Caribbean is settled mostly by the Spanish, like a while ago. and But later the English settle a little bit in there. And then, the main crop there is sugar. And sugar is a highly labor-intensive crop. But So first they, first they start recruiting the natives, but then the natives all die off because of the European de disease, remember. So, they start importing Africans into the Caribbean. And, but then the whites are fearful of slave revolts, even though they're never successful, because they always cut down those revolts. So, it was a harsh life for slaves, but even though, even through it, they formed their own slave culture. And the slaves that came to North America mostly came from the Caribbean, not directly from Africa. Now we get to talk about Georgia, because that's where I live. That's where I live, yeah. So, Georgia. Wait, I skipped a lot. We have to talk about Spain's North Colonies first. So, Spain has a lot of South America and a lot of Central America and the Caribbean, so they're like hugely there. But they also have New Mexico, where they work with the natives to develop agriculture. They have California, where there are disease epidemics in the natives, obviously. Also, they have Catholic missions in California. They also have Texas and Arizona. And in general, slaves sought to enlist the natives rather than displace them like the English did. The English is like, Indians, y'all move. We need this stuff here. But but the Spanish are like, come on, help us. Even though they didn't treat them completely equally, it was not, I don't know how to describe it. Anyway, so then they had a colony in Florida. And they they sought an expansion northward, up toward the English Carolinas. So there were hostilities between the Spanish and the English, and this is where we come to Georgia, because Georgia is established as a military buffer between Spanish Florida and the English Carolinas. It was founded by James Oglethorpe as a trustee colony. 
a wolf orb at first is really strict with the colony, but later is more lax after nobody likes his rules. And then we talk about Indians again, because what's called the middle ground. The, you know, there are areas where there are both Europeans and Indians living closely together, so they develop ways of living peacefully together. They had mutually beneficial relationships, like so if the English did something for the Indians, the Indians would do something to help the English. So then we move on to reorganization of the colonies, like especially with economics. So there's this policy called mercantilism, which is we need the most money without at the least expense. Okay, we can we're gonna export all our natural resources from the colonies to other nations so we get money. It's all about money with Europe. They just greedy. Yep. So. The, the English really want the colonies just to trade with them, but the English, I mean, the colonies want it traded with a lot of non-English markets. So England puts in place the Navigation Acts, which strictly regulate co colonial commerce, and it only allows trade with the British, but, but the colonists still continued to legally trade with other European and other nations in general. But also that, that encouraged the colonists to form their own industries as well at home, like shipbuilding and such as that. So then King Charles II tries to form the Dominion of New England, which unites all the American colonies, but the colonies didn't want that, so it like disbanded. And then that was King James II that in, attempted to do that. King Charles II makes Massachusetts a royal colony, and then James II tries to impose the dominion of New England. And he appointed Sir Edmund Andrews as governor, but nobody liked that, so it disbanded. So the Glorious Revolution was when James II is unpopular and Mary and William take the throne. The colonists abolished the Dominion and restored colonial governments. And then we, New York, a man named Nicholson is in power, but Jacob Leisler rebels and takes power. William and Mary then appoint the new governor after. There was like anti Leislerans and Leislerans of which they, whoever they supported. And then in Maryland, there was a rumor that the proprietor opposed King William and Queen Mary. So, John Coode drove out the officials in the name of Protestantism because... Anyway, Maryland becomes a royal colony and the Church of England is established as its official religion. And that finishes up chapter 2.